Hi, welcome to GT Coding. In the upcoming two videos, we will design this image slider using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. We won't be using any libraries for this. We will design everything from scratch. So let me show you a demo of how it works. So you have this image slider over here and this is the first slide. And when you click on this next button, we can see we have this animation and we get taken to the next slide. And we also have these dots over here which tell us which is the active slide. And now when we go to the next slide, we can see the next slide appears over here and uh, we also have the active dot changing. And if you are on the last slide and if you click on the next button, you'll be taken to the first slide. And you can even click on any of these dots over here and get taken to that slide. And in the same way when we are on the first slide and if you click on the previous button, you'll be taken to the last slide. So this is what we're going to design in the coming two videos. In this video, we'll just design it using HTML and CSS. And in the next video, I'll show you how to add JavaScript and make it work. So let's get started. All right, so I have this project opened in VS Code and I also have this folder called images. And in that folder, I have three images which we're gonna use in our slider. All right, let's get started by creating our index.html file. And we'll also create our style.css file. And we'll also create the JavaScript file. Let's start with the index.html. And we'll just tap exclamation and press tab for this HTML5 boilerplate. And uh, we'll type some title over here. Now we'll link our CSS file right here. And we'll also link our JavaScript file just before the body ends. Alright, let's start with the markup. First we have a heading. So we'll type h1 and uh, we'll type a heading over here. Let's open this with live server. So I have this extension live server installed on VS Code. So click on open with live server. And uh, here we can see our heading. Let's create a division with the class of wrapper to contain everything. And uh, then we'll have a previous button. So we'll create a division with the class of prev btn. And in that we'll have the previous icon. So we will use font awesome icons for this. So let's copy the font awesome CDN link. So I have searched for font awesome 5 CDN and uh, we'll go to this link cdnjs.com and uh, just go to CSS and click on copy for this link over here. And we'll just paste our font or some link here. So just paste the link in the href attribute. So for the left arrow in font or some, you have to use the classes FAS and FA Chevron left. And we can see the left arrow over here. We'll just copy this and create the right arrow. So here we'll type next button. And uh, instead of left, we will type right. So we have both the arrows. Now let's create the actual slider. So here we'll type slides container. And uh, in the slides container division, we will have separate divisions for each of the slides. So we'll have a division with the class of slide image. And in that we'll have each image. So we'll type IMG and in the source we'll type images slash slide image one. And this is the first image. And we'll just copy this and we'll paste it two more times. And uh, here we'll type image 2. And uh, here we'll type image 3. So now we can see we have all the three images and we also have the arrows. And then outside the wrapper, we'll create a division with a class of navigation dots. So this is where we'll have these navigation dots. So we'll create these dots dynamically using JavaScript depending on how many images we have in our slider. All right, that's it with the HTML. Now let's move to our style.css and style this page. So first of all, we will target the body and uh, we'll give it a margin of zero and also set the box sizing to border box. 
This line is basically used to have the correct width and height including the border and padding. If you want to know more about box sizing, I have a separate video on that. You can check it out. Alright, then we'll give a font family of Roboto sans serif and uh, then we'll give it a background color of 222. Two, two. Alright, now let's target the H1. So first of all, we'll text align it to the center and uh, then we'll set the color to light gray and then we'll set the font family to Roboto thin. And I don't think we need to have a font family over here for this slider. So we'll just remove this line from here. All right, now let's set the text transform to uppercase. And we'll set the letter spacing to 8 pixels. All right, so that's it with the H1. Now let's target the wrapper. And for the wrapper, we will give a width of 100%. And then for the image inside the slide image, We'll give a width of 100% and a height of 100%. All right now for the slides container, we'll give a height of 500 pixels. And then for the slide image, we'll give a height of 100% of the parent. So we can see that the image has a height of 500 pixels, but it doesn't look right. It looks like it has been stretched. So for that we have a property in CSS called object fit and you can set it to these values over here. So I'll just set it to cover and now we can see that the image has the right proportions. All right, now let's set the position of the slide image to absolute and before that we'll set the position of the slide container that is the parent of the slide image to relative. so that the position of the slide image will be relative to the slides container. So here we'll type position absolute. And now we can see all the images are in the same position and all are stacked up one above the other. Later we will change the position of these images using JavaScript so that these images will be one next to the other. But for now let's move on to the next and the previous buttons. So let's target them over here. So we'll type next btn and prev btn. So these are the two buttons. First of all, let's give them a background color of light gray. And uh, then we'll set a padding of 16 pixels. And then we'll set the position to absolute and the top to 50%. And uh, it is starting from the 50% mark, so we will just move it 50% upward. So we'll tap transform, translate y, minus 50%. All right, now it is vertically in the center. Now let's change the font size to 20 pixels. And let's also give it a box shadow. And we'll set it to 0, 4 pixels, 8 pixels, RGBA, 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.6. And we'll also set the Z index to 100 so that it will always be on the top. And we'll set the cursor to pointer. And then we'll also give it a transition of 400 milliseconds because we'll be using a hover effect for these buttons. Now there are two buttons over here, but one is above the other. So we need to set the position of that as well. So first of all, let's set the hover effect. So we'll type next button colon hover and uh, prev button colon hover and when we hover we want to change the background color so we'll set it to 48f9ff right now when we hover over this we have the change of color now let's set the position of these buttons so for the previous button we want the left to be zero and for the next button we want the position of right to be zero so we can see that the buttons have the correct position. Now the last thing we'll do is uh, we will style the navigation dots. Now although we will be generating them using JavaScript, let's just create some dots over here so that we can see how it looks in our styling. So in our navigation dots division, we will have some divisions called single dot. And then we'll have an active class in one of these dots to represent the active slide. Now let's go ahead and style the navigation dots. 
So first of all, let's target the single dot. And for the single dot, we'll give a background color of dark gray. And we'll also give a height and a width of 16 pixels. And then we'll give a border of 2 pixels solid black. And we'll set the border radius to 50%. Let's also set the cursor to pointer. And uh, we'll also give it a transition of 400 milliseconds. Now these are our single dots. Now let's position them correctly. So we will type navigation dots. And this is the parent division of the single dot. Now first of all we will set the display to flex and uh, then we will set a height of 32 pixels and we will align items to the center and justify content to the center. We will also give it a margin of 16 pixels and 0 and now we will give some margin to the single dots so here we will type margin 0 and 8 pixels. Alright, now we'll style the active class for single dot. So whenever we have a division with the class of single dot and active, we'll be applying these styles. So make sure to have single dot and active without any spaces. And uh, here we'll give a background color of light gray. So now we can see the second single dot has this light gray background color. That's because we have set the active class to the second single dot. Now if you remove this from here and add it to the first one, then we can see that the first one has this background color. So now that we have styled our navigation dots, let's delete all of these and we'll just keep the parent division because we'll be generating the dots using JavaScript depending on how many images we have in our slider. Alright, that's it for this video. We have completed the design of our image slider. In the next video, I will show you how to add JavaScript and make it work. So if you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.